Good morning, everybody. I got some real crazy hair going on this morning. <laughs> so, it is another beautiful, beautiful sunrise on the river. Yesterday, when we went through Winona, we ended up seeing that sailboat with the red sails. Its name is actually Golden Rule. It's ran by Veterans for Peace, and they're against nuclear war. Um, I found their Facebook page, and I sent them a text, and found out that they are actually doing the Great Loop as well, and they travel about the same speed as me, about five, six miles an hour. So we're going to try to meet up and head down the Great Loop together, they were saying. They're going to stop in lacrosse, and then they give talks. So I might end up getting out ahead of them, but I'm sure we'll see each other a few times out here on the loop. So I'm going to get up and eat my Cap'n Crunch and get dressed. Today is supposed to be up to 72, so it's going to be a real, real nice day. Um, I believe this Friday it's supposed to get down into the 30s mid 30s so we want to try to get as south as far and as fast as we can to get out of this cold so then we can kind of slow down and not have to worry about trying to get south as fast as we can like we are right now because the cold's setting in this is my view it's definitely definitely majestic So, first major stop today, Lock and Dam number six. That's just a few miles south of where we're at here. And uh, we'll hit that and then we'll keep on heading south. That's the plan. All right, we are up out of the V-berth. We're starting our morning routine here. Got our batteries and everything all plugged in from the night. Our Cap'n Crunch is all gone, so we're going to have to be stopping to get some more cereal pretty soon. Um, yeah, that Cap'n Crunch was amazing this morning. <laughs> when you're on a boat doing a trip like this, your meals end up being kind of uh, the highlight of the day sometimes. So, that's the beautiful sunrise. It's been real nice because of the current of the river. The wind's going the opposite way, but the current's going south, so we swing over and the uh, solar panel hits the sun dead on a lot, so that's good. After there's first to catch up to uh, charge the battery after I was sitting there for three days in Prescott, and I used it all up, and then we didn't really have much sun because it was kind of cloudy and I was traveling south, and the back of the boat faces north. One thing that I do wish I could do is put that panel on like a swivel. Put like two hinges right there on the top part. And then a way that you could kind of, uh, if you wanted, it could face backwards. Or if you needed to, you could like flip it up and it would face forward. That would be a really cool feature. Stuff for in the future, maybe. So, I'm going to get the anchor pulled up and we're going to get some miles behind us. All right, we up, are up here on deck. Um, yesterday, I fixed my bumpers. I tied the ropes down to it twice like that, and then I did some twists with a knot. And then, as you can see, the ropes that don't that go down don't sit right on that lip because when you're doing long miles, it ends up rocking back and forth. And when it's on that lip, it ended up cutting the rope on the one on the other side over here. So I did the same thing over here and to the other bumper. So that way we do not have rubbing on that lip of the rail for the... So little things like that that you have to notice as you're going and that you would have never thought of and then you improve on and change as you go. Cool things to know about and learn. I love it. 
All right, so I'm gonna get the anchor up and we're gonna head on out from our anchorage here. All right, everybody. And we are leaving for the day. I was gonna wait for that golden rule to come down. They were supposed to leave at eight. And I'm about uh, five or six miles south of Alma here and they said that they can travel at seven miles an hour I can only travel at five I thought they'd be down here by now it's about nine o'clock they left it seven or eight miles down here and they can travel seven or eight miles an hour if not the lock Number six is just down this way. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise on the river again. Last night I was looking up with Mark Twain. He's got some beautiful, beautiful writings on uh, the Mississippi River. He was a steamboat captain. And just the majesticness uh, of off the anchor alarm before I left. Hold on. We're back. At least I know it works. That was a test. Uh, but yeah, just the majestic beauty of the Mississippi River, like the sunrises and the sunsets. It's really cool. It's just like he explains it, like in the night, in the morning, and at night, especially at night, the sunset. Like the sunset everything just becomes real calm the wind like dies on the river and you just kind of a peace sets in around everything it's really cool i'm glad i got to experience it i'm really glad i looked up uh that stuff about the mississippi river and got to see that stuff that mark twain wrote if you guys get a chance at all definitely go check out some of the writings by mark twain about the Mississippi River. I need some sunglasses. So I got my beanie on. It's a little chilly. Shiver me timbers. <laughs> so into the sunrise we go. Real nice and sunny looking that way. Bright. So we are at lock and dam number six. I just radioed ahead. And apparently they had a mechanical problem and they're going to be doing some maintenance and it might be three or four hours until they're up. So I'm going to anchor out here and then they'll radio me and let me know when we can head down. If it wasn't already loud enough with the motor, we have a train going by too, but here is lock and dam number six south of Alma and between Winona. Cool little town here. I am not sure what it is called. Uh, since I'm pulling into the lock and dam, I'm not going to have time to uh, check on the map. Yeah, well, hold on. I'll pause the video and I'll be right back. Alright, I think it is Trampaloo, Minnesota, or uh, Wisconsin. It's amazing being able to record everything with your phone, use it for AIS, use it for uh, Facebook, take pictures, record, video, edit it. It reminds me as a kid of watching stuff and uh, having a tricorder. People don't think of it really as a tricorder, but it's the same thing. This thing will do everything. When I used to take care of my dad, we had uh, eye health on there, and that also we used to do our... Uh, Blood pressure, weight, everything on the track. It was really cool. Get some bags under my eyes. I've only been getting like six, seven hours uh, sleep a night, and even then you wake up once or twice in the middle of the night just to check everything. So once we get a little farther south and it's warmer, and I'm not worried about trying to beat the cold, maybe I'll overnight somewhere and just get a day of rest and health repairs. So here we go. The signs tell you how far it is to the inside of the lock and dam. That beeping was our AIS because there is uh, 
Just go right up to the front of the lock there. Uh, most of the time, the guy will be on the side that the building is on to get the thing. But I have seen a few where they have, or on one of them back there, the guy was not on the side that the building was on to grab the rope. So, we're going to head on down. I better pay attention. And then we'll get through the lock. Alright, so now the we went down, pretty much the same procedure as I showed you yesterday. Then the gates open, and then once they give the toot of the horn, you're good to go, and you can head out. So, we just gotta wait to hear the toot, and then we can head out. So, where is our tune? There was the tune. So, now we head on out. Down to La Crosse, Wisconsin. Hopefully, uh, at some point, that uh, the golden rule will catch up to us got the number of the captain and then he is off the ship right now apparently and Helena or Helena I believe is her name she is the one who is the captain right now so I've got her number and we've been texting and hopefully they'll catch up to us because they go six seven knots or six seven miles an hour I should say not knots and I go five so I'm hoping and maybe they'll catch up. If not, I might dock and lacrosse and then meet up with them. Just because I'd like to check out their boat and uh, see what it looks like and stuff. Kind of what all they do. They're uh, veterans. Most of them are Vietnam era veterans, they said. And my dad was a Vietnam veteran. And we rode in In Country, a motorcycle club that was all Vietnam era veterans. Well, not Vietnam era, in country was. You had to have your boots on the ground or in one of the ships in the, the area around it. Honkin Golf Yacht Club, they call it. Uh, so, there's a big difference because there are Vietnam era and then there's, you know, boots on the ground uh, veterans as well and sailors. So, anyway, it would be pretty cool to uh, meet up with them. I was telling somebody about it and they were saying, you know, that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, oh, somebody was calling it on the radio. Uh, yeah, we're southbound just coming out of American uh, Arena here. Uh, oh, somebody was on the radio on the block. Ah. Uh, I didn't know if it was maybe that golden rule caught up to us and they were right there. Got the marina just uh, north of the dam there. So beautiful, beautiful country still here in the river valley of Minnesota and Wisconsin. Uh, once we get down by La Crosse, uh, we'll be kind of getting down to the tip of Minnesota and either tomorrow or the next day, hopefully then we'll be getting into Iowa and Wisconsin. So we'll get a shot back and look here. Lock and dam number six look like. It's really cool going. Um, they're the property of the American people and they're free to go through and they're maintained by the Army Corps engineers. And if it's something you've never done in your life, I think you should check it out and experience it if you have the opportunity. And if you really have the opportunity, I think everybody should take a trip down the Mississippi and just, it's kind of like an American thing. Everybody should experience. You get to see a lot of the country, um, see the different walks of life and how different people live, and just seeing the different boats, you get to see how different people live. Uh, I guess you'd call it socioeconomic uh, levels. You know, you have everything. You have people with million dollar boats, and then you have people like me, uh, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and this with a tarp now, canvas one, and they have it rip on the rubbing their mask now. Life is 
about experiencing things. It's not about what you have. It's about what you make out of it. You know, when I was a kid, we used to play with sticks and mud. <laughs> and now kids have, you know, cell phones and iPads and they're bored. And we would have done anything for us. Uh, iPad when we were kids, like, whoa! So, life is what you make it. You know, it's all uh, a mental attitude. You can either sit and be a victim and think everybody's out to get you and you had such a hard life, or you can take that and let it mold you into something. Like they say, diamonds are made under pressure. So, in life, you don't have hard things happen to you, and then you do have something happen to you, you're gonna, you're gonna just fold and go, oh, I can't handle it. <laughs> anyway, I'm laughing again. Oh, beautiful country. This is a dredge, is what this is. Not a barge. So they use this when they're trying to make uh, places of the river deeper, or if parts of the river wash out, or the bank or anything. So, always cool to check out and see. One, it looks like it's got a little bit more of a weight, so but not too bad. And by the time it gets to us, we'll be all good. It looks like this fishing boat's riding up right behind it. And it's weight. I thought I'd share this with you. It's kind of cool. It's like a pop-up camper houseboat. Somebody just got like a pop-up camper and threw it on top of a pontoon or what, but it's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that before. It's like the scent, like they just took a pontoon and then they built around it so it was an enclosed cockpit, like a houseboat. Very cool. Thought I'd share that with you guys on our journey today. Some of the houses here in Winona, Minnesota, or, uh, by La Crosse, Wisconsin. This is the Minnesota side here. Uh, showing you guys. There's a boat that's like a pop-up camper. It's pretty cool. It'd be cool to live on the river right like that. One thing I was saying before the video stopped was it's on a corner. So I wonder what happens when the ice comes down the river in the spring if it hits this corner and then just shoots up, you know, in instead of making the corner and messes with people's houses or what. There's definitely a lot of nice ones. Getting warmer out, I threw some sunscreen on. Standing up, I can get my out of the sun, but sitting down back there, you end up with it in your face. It's not fun standing all day, or I can stand up on the seats and then I can get really up here and in the shade get the breeze coming through. So, I just took off one of my uh, long undershirts. I'm going to go throw my life jacket back on and we'll continue on. All right, here we are coming up on Lock and Dam number seven. We radioed ahead. There's no traffic in the way. They said head on up. the wind that comes off the top of these lock and dams. 
because there's enough in the block to win and it must hit it and then come up and over. So, we're gonna head on into the dam. Or lock, anyway, not to the dam. We don't wanna hit the dam. We wanna go into the lock. All right, here we are. I was checking out the AIS and I was able to find the golden rule. They are back just going through lock and dam number six now. On the AIS though, it says they travel at about uh, seven or eight miles an hour. All right, we are up to lock and dam number seven. And over here we actually have a sailboat, so that's kind of cool. I wasn't expecting to see that. So we still have a red light, but I'm gonna get up a little closer. And hopefully, once we get real close, they'll flip it to yellow, and then we'll be able to head in. They're filling it up from the other side, so it takes a little bit. Once it's good to go, it doesn't take long. before and know how it works. I just wanted to show you the dam and what it looks like up here. That was really cool to see that little sailboat here by the cross. So the doors are all open. Head in. Alright, we're all done with lock and dam number seven. All we gotta do is wait for the toot and we can head out to lacrosse I called ahead and there's the municipal municipal marina normally it's $25 a night to stay but because I said I'm only gonna stop for a few hours to get uh, some supplies in town I think I'll try to call a uber maybe or see what they have right there. Lock and dam, not number seven for the day. That's our sixth block. They actually knew we were coming. Apparently, maybe the lock guys are calling ahead or something and talking about us on a great loop trip. Because the chick that came and threw me the rope said, Hey, we heard about you from the other lock and dam. Good luck on your trip. Onward to look, we go. Here we're going under another bridge, close to La Crosse, Wisconsin. With our makeshift bimini, you can't really see it as much as I'd like to. I should have filmed before we got to it, but I wasn't thinking, and all of a sudden I'm like, ah, oh, should film this. So, sorry about that one. I'll get the next bridge. Okay, we're coming up on a railroad bridge. Wisconsin, and then we'll 
people into the municipal duck there at the city. And uh, after I called it in and called back, and we had slip B43. by the old railroad bridge. Uh, green deal. So watch out, there's power cables going underneath you. I don't know if it's still in use or if they just leave it open all the time and it's not in use. I didn't even hear uh, any radio traffic or anything. I didn't see it on the Navonics thing. So I'm guessing it's one that they don't use anymore and it just stays all the time, but I could be wrong. Alright, here we are, coming in to La Crosse, Wisconsin. So I believe the municipal harbor right on the other side of on the beginning of our journey and then they come all the way down here and back up or oh, all that sort of we got the lacrosse queen i'm not sure what that is i think that's just the building yeah that's just the building and there they are loading up go on out well this town has a crazy smell too. All these little river towns that smells like uh, industrial stuff. So it'd be cool to live on the river in a town, like one of these bigger cities, but not if it smells all the time. I'd rather be in one of the middle cities with the cool boats or the cool houses right on the river and that. Much, much more enjoyable. Got a slip at the municipal harbor over there. I believe that Golden Rule are going to be over here at this resort. They're going to give us a talk this afternoon about nuclear war. So I'll try to meet up with them after. Either that or I'm going to run into town and get some supplies. And uh, maybe I'll stop over there and watch a little of their talk. If not, I'm not really a people person. I'll uh, just come back to my boat and head on and I'll meet up with them later. So. We should just have two. We'll land right over there. Into that little inlet. We are at the <coughs> Lacrosse Municipal Dock. Spot 46 on the end. Oh my god. It feels weird to be on solid ground where the boat's not moving. I feel like I am still moving. <laughs> I remember I was reading old stories about like pirates and uh, British Navy guys that were talking about how people get seasick. And they would be on the boat so long and they would come in and they would get land sick because it didn't move right. And now I can kind of feel and understand that a little more. It's an interesting feeling. I hope people don't think I'm drunk because I'm like, ooh. Trying to always uh, counterbalance the wave when the boat goes back the other way. Uh, so yeah, tied up. Everything looks good so far. While on dock here, I can check. 
look and everything looks good nothing looks broke nothing looks messed up I should have parked the other way though and then we would have got the full uh, solar on there as you can see here this is what ends up happening is with the mass there like that and then the bimini it shadows it so you don't get as much uh, sun as you normally would have or we used to when we were on Lake Mille Lacs and the solar panel came from the other way I wish I had a ladder and I could go out there and uh, wash the solar panel as well so but otherwise it's doing good it's keeping us keeping us going So I'm going to go through everything on the boat, figure out what I need, figure out if they have a little store here or not, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, that wasn't bad at all, it was pretty easy. We got to the end dock there, number 46 got docked up. What all they have here? I'm on the free dock, not the pay dock, so I don't have water or electricity. Doesn't look like they have any garbages or showers or any crazy stuff here either, but that's okay. There should be a grocery store about 20 minutes from here, so I'm going to try an Uber for my first time. Never done that. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I got my little backpack, I got my water bottle. And we'll go up here by the road and call the Uber and see how it goes. Houseboat. There's their boat launch. And then up here we can walk up to the parking lot and then that's where and we'll go from there and see how it goes. Wish me luck. Well, we put in for an Uber, and now we just wait. This kind of might be over in the middle of nowhere, so I don't know if we'll get anybody to take us. I've never done an Uber before, so in the comments below, let me know if it's better to use Uber or Lyft. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, we got our Uber. It should be here in about four minutes, and we'll see where we go from there. Hopefully the guy does not murder me. <laughs> that would be horrible. Out of all the crazy stuff I've been through to get killed by an Uber driver after being hit by a semi on a motorcycle and all sorts of stuff. That would be nuts. So I'll come back once we get down into lacrosse. Well, at least we found a nice rock to sit on while we're waiting. Let's see a little more of the municipal uh Marina. And our Uber should be coming from over that bridge as a little black SUV. Any minute now. Alright everybody, so it wasn't too bad. We came here to uh, middle of La Crosse, Wisconsin. There's a bunch of little bars and stuff. I got a little backpack. So I got uh, I'm gonna go to the auto parts store and see if they have a fuel transfer pump So then I don't have to keep picking up the gas bottles and holding them and trying to pour the gas in a tip that you can actually get uh, a fuel transfer pump and then it's not as bad so Thought we'd give it a try See if we can find one around here To a little downtown I've never been I think I've been through here before on my motorcycle, but I've never actually like walked around the city or anything. Normally I'm pretty especially when I was taking care of my pops there. We didn't, we didn't go anywhere. So for the Uber it was about a 10 minute ride, so that wasn't bad at all. And uh yeah. So far this traveling and travel blogging is a lot easier than I thought. I used to always laugh when I would see like Bald and Bankrupt and the Harold Bollard guy walking around filming himself talking. 
and uh, so that is the city. I'll come back once we get down to the boat. Well, they did not have a fuel transfer pump at the Napa. They had a whole lot of wrenches and everything else, but they didn't have what I needed. So that kind of sucks. Oh well. We'll hoof it. Parts auto value. So we're gonna try that place and see what we get. So check that place out and I'll be back. Well, we got the auto parts store, Daimler, or Doll Automotive, and Toyota. So between one of them, hopefully maybe one of them will have what we need. So we'll go check out this place first. And when you see me next, either I'll be smiling because I have a fuel transfer pump, hand pump, or I'll be going frowny face, they don't have one. So we'll see what we get. All right, frowny face. They did not have a fuel transfer pump. Or a fluid transfer pump is what the guy called it. They could order one in and it would be here in a few days, but that does not help us because we are only going to be here for a few hours and we want to push on. I don't mind uh, picking up the gas cans and pouring them in. It just would have been cool to have a fuel transfer pump to make it a little easier. But you do what you do. So, uh, I checked in with the boat, the Golden Rule. They're over across the river giving their talk. I think I'm not gonna stick around. I'm just gonna head down river. They can travel seven miles an hour. They'll probably catch up eventually. If not, um, I'll probably have a few days where I stop over and then I'm not moving, traveling, and then they'll catch up. So, right now I don't want a chance having any kind of any uh, chance of having any kind of uh, cold weather on the way that messes me up or gets too uncomfortable. So, that's the plan. I'm going to head on back down to the boat. It's about a 10 minute walk. Alright, that wasn't too bad of a walk. I have a lower disc in my back that's uh, herniated though, so walking that far did kind of hurt a bit. But, it wasn't too bad. There is right there the golden rule I'll catch up with them later they're probably having a good talk over there so we're gonna get back Turn down over to the boat and we have some pop and some chips and I did not get a fuel transfer pump that was not as successful of a trip to town as I was hoping. <laughs> but it is what it is. So see what the town looks like. Here's something park. That's where we're at. We have to walk down this way and over to the boat launch. Well, I just had one of the uh, locals walk by me here at the dog park and he actually informed me that this is a homeless encampment. Well, the homeless people that came and lived here in La Crosse. Well, that's kind of interesting. Definitely probably not a place you want to be at night. <laughs> so, it's kind of sad people are down on their luck and living the river but each their own. Um, if you want to get out there and make something of your life, you got to do it. You can't just sit around and do nothing. So, anyway, so far the locals have been pretty nice. I haven't had any assholes or anything. So, I don't particularly like strangers or people in general. I like animals. Animals are good kind <laughs> so 
dog park. We go up around that big shaped building and then on the other side is the walkway down to the dock. So it shouldn't be too bad. Sorry if these videos are getting too long. They're getting to be like an hour a piece, but I don't have anything to do except talk to you guys on the camera. Slight right onto Joseph Houska Drive. So I'll be back once I get down to the boat. Turn left onto Marco Drive. Alright, here's the municipal dock. Wisconsin. Cool little town. One thing that would be cool is if they had the municipal dock kind of located by some services <laughs> and not on the complete outskirts of town. But oh well. What you gonna do? <laughs> so I texted uh, Helena or Helena from the Golden Rule. She's gonna check with the dock over there and I'm gonna Go on over and say hi. Here we are. We made it back. So here's all the houseboats chilling at the municipal dock. I don't know if these people stay here like long term or what, because I thought it was a transient dock. But it sure seems like a lot of people are here long term. <laughs> but you never know. We're on the D dock all the way on the end, which is fine by me. What do we have over here? Do we have water? Do I think we have a pump out? Oh, emergency vessel only. And then over here. We do not have water. Having those big jugs makes it a pain in the butt, so I want to be able to uh, fill them up as close as possible. very far with them. Well, the old girl's still here and floating. Well, this is good this is good so I'm gonna get on board get all tied off or get untied we're gonna head north a little over to that fuel dock and probably say hi to the golden rule over there is the plan all right here we have the golden rule we're gonna pull in front of her here on the fuel dock and tie up and then go check it out and meet her crew in person so the next time you see me, we should be over at that fuel dock and we'll get a tour of the Golden Rule. Pretty cool day today so far. Got to check out La Crosse, Wisconsin. We had to hoof it. We didn't get our fuel transfer pump or fluid transfer pump, but that's okay. Oh well. We got uh, some Doritos and root beer. That is totally also amazing. <laughs> So, all right, I'm gonna head on over here to this fuel dock. All right, everybody, we made it over to the fuel dock over here and look, and we have the golden rule. She's a pretty good ship. She's from Humboldt Bay, California, and it was restored and it was sailed up and down the coast and then they trailered it from California up to Minneapolis and now they're gonna do the Great Loop and they're gonna do it twice they're gonna go down the Mississippi the first time and then the second time they're gonna come down and they'll go through the Erie Canal or they'll go up through the Erie Canal through the normal way and they'll come down the Illinois River and then they're gonna come down and do the Tennessee Tom. The second time is their plan. Might be kind of cool to catch them and do a little bit of the second loop when we get back. 
She's a fine ship indeed, but I definitely love my mellow. So we're definitely going to see him a lot along the trip. So I'm going to get some gas here and I'll come back in a little while. All right, everybody. That is the golden rule. She's a fine ship indeed. And Helen was an amazing woman, the one that runs it. She's very kind. And Steve, the first mate, he's very awesome. The host of the city, lacrosse, who's hosting the event, invited me to dinner with him. But uh, I'm kind of antisocial, so we're going to push on. With the moon almost full, I'm going to try and... Uh, Get a night run in tonight. It should be pretty fun. We'll put on all the red lights and we'll go into battle stations mode. <laughs> this will be the end of today's video and then I'll make a part two for uh, tonight's voyage. And we press on. So that'll be the end of today's video and in a little bit I'll start another one for tonight's video. We'll try and go late as we can. Might get a little chilly, but this uh, Friday it's supposed to get down in the 30s. So my batteries don't like that. Of course at night I'm not charging so they're not warming up. And uh, it's a 200 amp hour battery and like up on Lake Malax when it didn't get real cold, I only use like two or three amp hours at a time. When I'm watching the TV, charging my phone or the radio or whatever, and uh, we're good to go. 10, 12 hours doesn't use that much. It's maybe 30, 40 at most amp hours, and I have a hundred. When it gets cold, like up on Lake Malax, uh, when it was warm, I'd spend all night doing stuff, and I'd get up, and the voltage would drop from like 12.7 down to like 12.4 and almost maybe 12.3 when it's real cold we'll start the morning and the batteries will be down in the voltage like 12.2 12.1 12.0 i saw when i was real and i used a lot of power that first day when i was up at prescott just chilling and then we were facing the wrong way we weren't facing the sun so it was pretty cool we could run into uh golden rule and talk to Helen, the organizer of it all. I didn't get to meet the captain. He was down asleep behind his lee cloth. Um, he just flew in. They had some other captain before that, and then they switch off crew members. Uh, next year, they're going to do it the second time. They're going to do a great loop, and they offered to uh, let me come out and prove sometime. They said, even captain, if I make it through the great loop on this, they said, you can do it yourself. There's no reason you couldn't captain this boat. I was thinking in my head, I wonder if these people know I've only been sailing for like two years. They think I'm like a hardened sea dog. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you like today's video, hit that like button and subscribe. It helps us out. I'll see you guys later.